All right. Gervonta Tank Davis is getting a whole lot of very, very smart promotion on the way to the Yuri Yoka's Gamboa fight. I'm telling you, man, I think I see what uh, Floyd Mayweather Jr. and these guys are trying to do with him. I want to talk about two things, how they're going about building this guy up. I think is brilliant or actually is very disciplined. At the same time, I'm praying that they do not go the way of another young fighter that was being built very in a very smart way, Canelo Alvarez, where everything turns south. Let's talk about that on this Saturday morning video. All right, welcome back to the channel, subscribers. If you are not subscribed, please subscribe and hit the bell icon so you can be notified of when we release more videos. And also, I want to say a special thank you to the two communities that really support this channel. I so much appreciate the patrons that come to the channel, listen to our daily op uploads on Patreon, and also the people that come by the live streams Monday through Friday right around 11, 15 a.m. And our big show where we wrap up the week, OG Boxing Talk with myself, KQKC Boxing, Trap House Boxing, Curtis Anderson, and my executive producer, Blood Boxing. Let's talk about Javante Davis, man. Javante Davis is, without a doubt, one of my favorite fighters in boxing. I'm looking at my phone real quick. You got to forgive me. Um, I'm trying to multitask this morning. Javante Davis is one of my favorite uh, fighters in boxing. And that's because I love the way that he, the, I love the way that he fights. I think that he is a highly, highly skilled fighter, very, very technically sound fighter, talented fighter. And also, you know, he's a knockout artist. And, you know, who doesn't love a knockout artist, man? Tank Davis is for me is the real deal. I really got turned on to Tank Davis right around the time, a little bit before the Jose Pedraza fight. But I watched that Jose Pedraza fight, man. I was like, wow, this kid right here is something special. He signed with Floyd Mayweather and Mayweather Promotions. Um, after he fought Jose Pedraza, you know, there's been a drop off in the in the type of talent that he's fought, that he's been fighting. And there's been a lot of clamoring around, you know, people saying, you know, he needs to fight Lomachenko. He needs to fight Lomachenko. He needs to fight, you know, better competition. No doubt about it. I understand. I understand that. What I what I've seen just on uh, today, though, on uh, on his Instagram page, you know, I'm getting a little more into, you know, into Instagram. I've been, you know, building up my Twitter, you know, I've been building up my Twitter fingers, getting more acclimated and made it more, making it more of a habit of, of Twitter. Once I, now that I feel like I'm in a habit of really in a habit of going to Twitter, now I'm going to start my, my Instagram. So in the midst of trying to set up my inner Instagram, I come across Javante Davis's page. One of the first people that I followed and I see this promotion for, the Baltimore Ravens and the promo it came out yesterday and it was so I love the way that it was directed the thing that I liked about it though it was Gervonta Davis was selling the Ravens the Baltimore Ravens Gervonta Davis is from Baltimore he's from the city of Baltimore but it was it was a montage it was it was a montage of clips of Gervonta Davis fighting and the Baltimore Ravens playing football and the theme was, you know, you can call us underdogs, but, you know, well, who's the, you know, anyway, he's just going through this big, he's near, Gervonta Davis is narrating this, uh, the, this montage of clips, right? And it was like a marriage between Gervonta Davis and the Baltimore Ravens. Now, I know where this is, I know where this is coming from. This is coming from the, I do believe the relationship between Fox and, between uh, Gervonta Davis and the PBC, the PBC and Fox, who who televise national football games, right? They have the NFL. Now, Tank, from my understanding, is still fighting on Showtime. So I'm not quite, I don't quite get that. Maybe when he gets to pay-per-view, you know, it, they're going to have Showtime kind of be the the building block for fighters because they have a smaller budget but they had but they're very committed to boxing and then once fighters reach a certain level then you know where they feel like they can put them on on pay-per-view then they'll you may do the fox pay-per-view angle i'm not quite sure what that is but there's definitely a connection between the pbc Gervonta davis and the nfl 
And what I think that is, is brilliant. I think not, not, just not brilliant promotion, but common sense promotion that you don't see a lot and you definitely don't see out of ESPN. You definitely, you didn't see it. You don't see it in the zone in the United States, but a, a organization, a promotional outfit trying to create a, a, a regional pride in a fighter. Now that's something that has been talked about a lot in trail boxing talk. Uh, but I think uh, black fight fan TV was one of the first people, if not the first person that I heard really talking about how important it is for American fighters to be sold in the markets that they come from. Like what happened with uh, Errol Spence jr. In Dallas, when he fought, uh, when he fought Mikey Garcia in Dallas and he had like 40,000, 50,000 people in uh, a cowboy at the Cowboy Stadium. And that was the first pay-per-view he did. I think the pay-per-view did like 325, 350,000 pay-per-views. But a big economic success coming from the Nate, from the area that that fighter is from, because that area are, are have the people that are most familiar with the fighter and you can build him up the quickest. And so the fact that you have this regional thing going on in in Baltimore and, you know, just like you have this regional thing going on with Errol Spence Jr. in in Dallas, man, that's a that is a huge thing, especially when if you get to the point where you can have two of these fighters rivaling one another. Now, there's also this is something I read an article on Seconds Out. Shout out to Seconds Out, where there was a they analyzed whether or not. Regis Progray should fight Lewis Reston next. Lewis Reston, if I hope I got the name right, is a is an up and coming fighter from the UK. And Lou DeBella wanted a fight between, thought that a fight between Regis Pro, Regis Progray and Lewis Reston at a particular arena would be a very good, you know, would be a good fight. But this this author who who apparently is very familiar with the UK talked about how. The fight really wouldn't work there yet because they have not developed because Lewis Reston has not developed that local rivalry. The, he hasn't developed the fan base in that particular area in the UK that would justify or create a regional rivalry. So and I think I see this from the outside looking in the UK where you have might have a guy from um, one area in the UK fighting somebody else from the UK. And like what like the drama that happened between O'Hara Davies and somebody he was fighting where there is a lot of po politics in two different areas of the UK. Uh, O'Hara Davies said something that he shouldn't said about the Sun magazine. And there was all this drama. Right. That shows you that. And, and let me get back to the statement. And he said, like, that's why you can get 20,000 people in a in a stadium to watch two domestic level fighters fight in the UK because of the development of these local rivalries. So what I'm hoping for Javante Davis is that's what they're, is that's what they're able to do or is develop him into a regional superstar and then be able to then use that to have him, you know, the people in Baltimore will watch him fight on what, you know, on Showtime or on Fox when he's in Atlanta against your Gamboa. Now here's the thing. I like that. I like that Floyd Mayweather Jr. has been very, very uh, patient in building, building Javante Davis. I There's a lot of criticism about people fighting champions right away and fighting the best competition right away. There's also something to be said about a fighter developing their skill set and getting more fights, getting more experience. And I think that that's going to pan out well for Javante Davis because two years ago, Javante Davis or a year and a half ago, Javante Davis was acting a lot less mature than he is at the moment. So just the simple fact that he's aged, you know, that he's aged, that, you know, he's had some ups and downs. His ups and downs have been outside of the ring with, you know, getting arrested or missing, you know, missing weight for a, missing a weight for a fight, that type of drama. And, you know, it seems as if he's much, those issues have, if not gone away, they're definitely not in the public eye where we'd hear about it. And so he's matured more. So when he gets to this bigger stage and he takes these bigger fights, he might actually be more ready for it now at the age of 23, you know, I think he might be 24 now than he was at the age of 22. The risk is, though, with with Mayweather promotions is that they continue to take that line 
and do, and then start doing things like like Yuri Okus Gamboa is a is a type of fight that I don't mind for him because it's an older fighter with a big with a big name who's definitely on the downside of his career. But so doing that once to get, you know, to get him in there with a guy that's savvy, that's been there before, that's a good thing. But if he goes to Canelo Alvarez right route and takes that guy, a guy after guy after guy after guy after guy, you know, waiting fighters to get old, waiting for fighters to get older, you know, changing rules, uh, having catch weights, rehydration clauses, all that type of nonsense to continue to try to build a Germonte Davis uh, via promotional tactics or negotiation tactics, you know, that I think that I think is going to be, uh, you know, where problems will, would lie for me. But as is right now, hey, man, I think that they're doing a good job with Javante Davis. I'm excited for this Yuri Yokos Gamboa fight. I'm excited for him as a young man that, that he seems like he's really maturing, developing well. You know, he did a great job on that promotion. And it seems like the city of the you know, city of Baltimore, he had a parade in Baltimore like they're getting behind him. So, hey, man, just I hope this continues to keep going for him like that. And, you know, that's my take on it. But I hope at a certain point in time, you know, hey, man, he's going to have to really start blasting out the cats that are at the top level and around the age 25, 26 years old. I mean, that's about the right time to do it. Let me know what you think in the comment section. And with that, I'm out. Peace.